Hey y'all, how you doing? Um, hanging in as always. <laughs> I had a really good therapy session yesterday. Um, last week, my brother and sister-in-law came out to the house up here from Virginia Beach. And normally I don't contact them and that is also reciprocated. They don't contact me a lot. But through all my counseling, I'm looking at the reasons behind why I do things. So instead of just leaving things the way they were, um, last Wednesday, I went up, they were, they were up there, I went up there, and spent about three, three and a half hours with them, talking, and then two days later, I went back up, and was up there for another hour or so, so, uh, you know, we, we had a lot of time and we were talking a lot. And I, I don't even know how we got on some of the subjects we did, but growing up, we... We, as children, can only see things from our perspective. We can see that things that happen to us are also happening to our sibling or friends. But it's hard for a child, a, a kid to be able to view it from any other perspective than their own, which I, I did that, you know, I, I knew my brother and I weren't treated right. My, my mother treated us abhorrently. Um, and she was vocal about the fact that my brother was her favorite. And that, of course, clouded my view on everything. And while my brother was up, while I was up with him talking, we got on the subject of, you know, my mom and what we went through. And, you know, he told me he did not feel loved by her. And did not have his emotional needs met any more than I did. And... Hearing that, changed my perception of things. My mother should never have been a mother. Yes, that would mean my brother and I and all our families wouldn't be here, but she was not equipped to be a mother. Everything I know about that woman has been naught but lies. 
things she told me that she went through growing up were bold-faced lies. I, I, I honestly don't know who that woman was. The only thing I am confident in the fact of knowing is that she sh was not equipped to be a mother. while my brother and I were talking he brought up an incident that I didn't know had happened maybe I did know and it's been blocked out I don't know um, <clears throat> I know it happened while after we had moved here to Virginia um, my brother said that Mom was, she had told Dad that she didn't love him. Now, I don't know whether she did it out of anger, out of frustration, or merely to just get a rise out of my dad, because she would do that. I, I don't know her motivations between for saying that she didn't love him, but my brother had to deal with the consequences of that and he told me that after she said that he ended up coming into the room where my dad was and thankfully got the shotgun out of my dad's hands before he pulled the trigger because he had it pointed at his head and was going to pull the trigger. Knowing my dad felt that because of my mom It hurts if it if it hadn't been for my brother I might not have had my dad as long as I did and I'm I'm so very sorry he had to do that but I am eternally grateful that he was there and was able to take the gun from my dad. And I, I don't know as if my brother knows how grateful I am that he, that he did that. My brother and I, we, yeah, we were siblings and we fought, but we always had each other's back when it came to anybody else. But we've never been, you know, bosom buddies, you know, we, we were siblings, but we weren't best friends by any stretch and it, it I, I I wish we had that kind of relationship but because of what we've been through and how our experiences have shaped us into the different people that we are you know do I envision myself talking to him on a daily or even weekly basis? Probably not. Am I going to go out of my way a little bit more to make sure I see them when they come up? Absolutely. Because as
like I said, as kids, we expect our perception to be from our point of view. But as we grow up, we're supposed to be able to see things from somebody else's perspective as well. And while I can do that, because of the unmet emotional needs as a child, everything in my life and everything I go through really has been me, me, me. My mother abused both of us emotionally. I'm the one that makes it about her. I, I never, I never paid attention to the emotions and needs of my brother because he was in my eyes he was my rival he was the reason I didn't get love and affection and not not knowing he wasn't getting his needs met Just, even if I had known, I probably, as a child, wouldn't have really cared. It was all about the me. And I look back at my life and in a, in, in a lot of ways, I grew up kind of spoiled because dad, dad spoiled me as much as he could when he was around. And yeah, I worked for a long, I, I mean, I worked for four years before I even got out of high school, but everything I needed was, was taken care of. And if I wanted something, my parents would get it for me or, you know, I would save up my money and get it for my, myself. So I went from being, you know, kind of taken care of by my parents to being married to a man seven years older than me when I got out of high school. And I went from being taken care of from my parents to being taken care of by him. And I was extremely proud of the fact that I get what I want. If, you know, we, we didn't consult each other on everything we purchased, but if it was a, a, you know, about $50 or more at the time, you know, we're talking late eighties, so that would be a bit more expensive today. Um, then, then we did talk it over, and if I wanted something and he told me no, I had no problem telling him no in the bedroom until I got my way. And after my first count, after going to see my first counselor when I was with him, I realized how wrong that was. And I stopped consciously doing it. Unfortunately, looking back, I continued it without even realizing it. I... I I'm the 
one of the things over the years that I have been envious about is my brother's faith. Yeah, I was raised in the church, continued to go to church um, up, until the t up until the late 90s. But once I was able to reason things out on my own, I never had that overwhelming feeling of knowing religion is the answer. I don't feel that way. Is there an omniscient being? Maybe. But my brother has always had his faith. He has been very active in his church. He's, you know, he does multiple things in his role in the church. And, and he knows God is there and God will help. I don't hold that faith. And I've I've been very envious of his ability to, ha to have that faith. To not question everything. And to be able to, to just be content knowing God's there and all will be right. And, you know, that's just one of the ways that we, co I guess, coped with our circumstances in different ways. He put his faith in God and his wife. I put my faith in logic and reasoning and not trusting anybody. I will trust people to an extent, but when it comes to trusting that they're not going to hurt me, that they're going to be there for me, mm-mm. -mm. And that has driven one of my key manipulations that I do. And I'm not proud of the fact that I did that I've done this. Not at all. It I want people to want to be with me and to love me. Yet I feel unworthy of that love. So what I do is I want, I, I, I will push people away or not push them away, but keep them at arm's length and wait for them to contact me, enter my life, so to speak. So I'm holding them at arm's length, wanting them to fight against that, to prove to me they want to be with me and that I am loved and I'm not unlovable. And I've done that to my spouses, I've done it to my kids, I've done it to my family. I'll sit here in the house, 
I'll know my brother and his wife will be up at the house up there. But because I want them to prove I'm worthy of being in their lives, then I expect it, I've expected them to reach out instead of taking that initiative like I did last week. And I have done that all my life. I have tested people without them even knowing they're being tested. All to prove that they love me and then if they don't fight to get closer to me, then that just proves I'm unlovable in my own mind. Thank you, Mom. One of the things I've really worked hard with counseling is be, is realizing sitting here causing myself anxiety waiting for somebody to contact me is pointless. Absolutely. And that has driven me over, you know, the past six months to reach out to my, my kids more. Um, it's what drove me to reach out and, and go spend time with my brother and sister-in-law last week. Because it, that is not something... A, a stable person does. And I'm not saying I'm unstable. I am just... I create my own toxicity. And... As, as I mentioned earlier, you know, I was proud of the fact that I always get what I want, but honestly, I was just good at manipulation. I'm sorry, I am good at manipulation. That's not something that has just gone away, but I am looking deeper into the reasons I do these things to try to address what's causing me to do these things. Being able to look back at, at John and mine's childhood and see things from his perspective is what came about from me taking the time to go up there last week and, and spend time and talk with him. It, may, it gave us a little bit more to bond over. Yes, it's a terrible thing that he had to pull a gun from my dad's hands, but I'm even more grateful now than I, uh, that he did. Jasmine told me yesterday, she said in all her years of counseling, she has never had someone look into their actions as deeply as I have been doing. And coupled on top of that, opening myself up to be vulnerable with my brother and then being able to step out of my perspective and see things a little bit more from his. She said in all her time of counseling, she has not had one patient do this much. 
and I cried. She told me she was proud of me and I started crying because that's not something I'm used to hearing. I am a very big hater of hypocrisy. Yet I have been a big perpetrator of it without even thinking about it. Being an adult and seeing things as me, 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 not you, 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 or us. That's not the actions of a grown-up. Or an, as should I say, an adult. <laughs> you can grow up, but that doesn't mean you're an adult. And I put on the good facade that I'm an adult. But emotionally, I am stuck as a preteen. <laughs> so it's been a couple, couple good weeks of trying to change my behaviors. I cannot fix what I don't acknowledge. And holy fuck am I finding a lot out. <laughs> but I want to be better and I can't until I unless I make that effort to change the reasons I do things and and these these things I do the the, the manipulating the, the testing people the not trusting it all comes from that fear and shame that is stuck in me. That fear that my mother was right. The shame that I wasn't even good enough for my own mother to love me. That's where all my actions come from so I am trying I am doing everything I can to examine what I do and why I do them but also what I hope to accomplish by doing those things. And to know that there are better ways to go about things. Yeah, I could sit here and wait for my kids to call. But why? If they're busy, they'll let me know. And they'll call me back. So, I reach out now. I, I, I don't want to fuck up with them. I really don't. Ah. Uh, yeah, I've done it 
before, you know, in doing things the wrong way, but I think they appreciate the fact that I am trying very hard to overcome my own insecurities so I can be a better part in their lives. This shit ain't for the weak. <laughs> it ain't for the weak hearted. I'm fine. I, I am. I am really appalled at the actions I've taken for so long without even being conscious of doing those things, really. I always couched it as, you know, I'm just good at getting my way or <sighs> one of a million excuses. But it all comes down to manipulation. And that's what I've been doing. It's what I'm good at. And that ain't something you want to put on your resume. All right, well, I've already taken my bedtime meds, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and get ready and put on a movie and hopefully get some sleep. I really do thank you if you've watched this. I, I do appreciate it. These videos are hard for me because I am exposing weakness in myself. But I can't keep doing the things I've been doing because it's gotten me nowhere good. So I will keep making these videos. I don't know how, you know, <laughs> when I first started this channel, I really wanted to do it on a daily basis, but uh, that ain't happening. I am not that comfortable making these. And I just don't have it in me to do that. I, I Social media content creators, I don't know how they do it. This shit drains me. But, uh, again, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. And I love you all from the bottom of my heart, and I will talk to y'all in the next video.